Are you a developer who is interested in learning what AMP script for the marketing cloud is? Are you a marketing operations specialist who wants to get into software development with the marketing cloud? Or are you a marketer who wants to understand what's possible so that you can talk to your developers better? My name is René Winkelmeyer and in this series I want to show all of you how to get started with AMP script for creating dynamic emails with the marketing cloud. In this first episode, we will talk about some basics, what scripting languages are available, and how to get started with data extensions. First, let's talk about what we mean when we say dynamic email. In our context, a dynamic email is a singular email template that is used to deliver a highly personalized email to your customer base. And this personalization ranges from basic elements like providing the correct first name of your customer in an email up to more advanced elements like showing a filtered list of products or how to provide a view as web page functionality. Here you see what is called a personalization string, in this case for the first name. These strings are system provided and give you direct access to attributes of the subscriber like name or email address. Or you can access system data like current date time or in which context your content is shown. Also note how the string is enclosed in double percentage delimiters. This is a simplified option for you to use those strings in your content outside of AMP script. And within AMP script you would omit those delimiters. Now we mentioned a couple of times AMP script, but what is that actually? Overall the marketing cloud offers three different ways on how you can programmatically customize your content. The first one is AMP script. And this scripting language offers you a variety of functionality to create dynamic content. You can perform create, read, update and delete operations against your data in Marketing Cloud. Or you can use it to simply hide and show your content based on your customer's preferences. And this all without the prerequisite to actually have learned a programming language before. Second, you can use server-side JavaScript, or in short, SSJS. This is, as the name says, JavaScript that runs on the server. It has the same feature set as AMP script and more. The main difference to AMP script, besides that this is JavaScript, is that all content is pre-rendered on the server side. You can't dynamically update content of an email when the user opens it, for example. Everything is generated at send time. Third, you can use Guide Template Language, which is abbreviated to GTL. GTL is based on handlebars and moustache, and its intent is to give you a flexible mechanism to quickly build out personalized journey messages. Also note, you're not limited to only be able to use AMP script or SSJS or GTL. No, you can combine them as you need, and not only in email, also in landing pages or push messages. And for this series, we will get you started with AMP script. And this is the fastest way to build out your personalized content. We will cover basic, intermediate and advanced topics, as well as more on AMP script, GTL and SSJS in general on the Salesforce developer channels in the near future. So make sure to subscribe to our newsletter on developer.salesforce.com and here on YouTube also to stay up to date on your releases. Before we dive in into AMP script, we have to talk about data. Because without data, you very likely won't be able to create a personal experience. And there are two options in Marketing Cloud on how you can model your data. The first one is using lists. These are pretty much the same as like Salesforce reports and they allow you to segment your subscribers that you want to target for your email communications. The second one are data extensions. A data extension represents a data table in Marketing Cloud's database. If you're not familiar with data tables yet, think of them like a gigantic spreadsheet, just in a database. And for our series, we will use data extensions. Yes, multiple. They offer the bigger feature set for what we want to build. We will link for you in the description the feature comparison between lists and data extensions, so that you can determine what will be best for your use case. We start here in Contact Builder the place where you can model your data. The data extensions menu entry brings us to the location where we can manually define a data extension. 
and depending on your setup, Marketing Cloud comes with a variety of predefined data extensions, like those from Einstein Recommendation Builder. For our use case, let's create a new data extension. We call it My Subscribers. And what is really important here is to define the data extension as a sendable. This little checkbox is what controls if your data extension contains sendable attributes, like an email address. And with that, it can be used for sending messages, like our dynamic email. Next, we can define a custom data retention policy, which we leave as is. And the last step is to define a couple of attributes for our data extension. As mentioned before, it's a data table in our database. And with that, each attribute represents a column in our table. The last step for our sendable data extension is to relate our email attribute with a subscriber key. Okay, let's finish it. And let's select our new My Subscribers extension from the list of data extensions. Data in data extensions can come from multiple sources. You can manually upload comma separate files or upload data from AWS S3. Or you choose an FTP service data source. All of that can be done manually or you can schedule imports as you need. You can also modify the data in your data extensions using the Marketing Cloud APIs. This flexibility is what makes data extensions so powerful. We will use in a first step data from a CSV file. This is very likely not what you would prefer in real life, because who wants to run manual data import tasks? Still, sometimes for one-off data, we have to do it. Okay, let's finish the wizard. And once the import has succeeded, we can take a look at the newly created records. There we go. The next step is to create new content so that we can test our new data extension. We do that here in Content Builder. For our series, we'll create a new email. There are plenty of templates available and we will select the blank page one, as we, for whatever reasons, want to really start from scratch. We set my email as name and move to the next step. Here in Content Builder, you can then use drag and drop to build out your content. For our case, we'll start with a simple text block for now. And don't be irritated by the placeholder text on the right. This is just to show you that you haven't entered any text in your text content block yet. We enter our first text, which includes our previously introduced personalization string. And we define a subject, because no one likes emails without subjects, right? Now, let's test it. And there we go. In our subject line, as well as our email text, you can see the data from our data extension and we can navigate around the data to see how it displays with different values. That's it with our first video about creating a dynamic email with AmScript. We looked into what personalization strings are and we set up some data so that we can truly build personalized content. In our next video, we will start to dive into AmScript by using code blocks and conditional language elements. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the new release. Thanks so much for watching.